evening, friends. How are you? Thank you very much. It's uh, exciting to be among young people. As I told you, I'm aging. But uh, when you meet young people, you see possibilities, you see vitality, you see a future, you see energy, and you see many uh, possibilities that are in the making. So it's a blessing to be among you, and I believe that as I come out of this, I'll be much more educated, much more informed by interacting with you. As we continue, yesterday we looked at a very important topic, and we will uh, have time for interaction. But before we get to that interaction, we want to get to what we will look at today. We look at the issue of dating and courtship. Yesterday, we were doing a detox because there is information or misinformation that has flooded us and we have been misinformed and we have thought that we were doing the right thing for ourselves when actually we were doing a disservice to ourselves. We continue this evening, we look at something very important, dating and courtship. I've said this in many weddings as I solemnize marriages. That's one thing I enjoy, to sit down with young people as they prepare to get married and counsel them on issues that they might confront when they get married. And I usually start my presentation in most weddings with these words. A child was asked about Jesus' comment concerning marriage. And the little child responded that Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they are doing. The little child says Jesus commented that way. But the child might have been wrong but properly observed the confusion that is prevailing in marriage and thought that this is the comment that Jesus should have submitted on marriage, courtship and dating. It's good, as I've said, to marry and naturally we are attracted to the opposite gender. When the time comes, you just feel the time has arrived. But one problem that prevails mostly in dating and courtship is not our culture. Us as Africans, we never used to have much of that dating and courtship. It's something we are learning, both as your parents and uh, as young people, how to live in other people's cultures. In the Bible, we don't have that space for dating and courtship. Most of the marriages in the Bible are prearranged. Eliezer goes to the home of Rebecca, Genesis chapter 24, he goes there and he takes Rebecca and Rebecca just sees Isaac in his tent. They are already married and they go into the tent of uh, Sarah and Isaac knew his wife. That's how it was in the Bible. So courtship, we are getting into an area which really is not much spoken for in the Bible, but we get some principles that we will apply as we get into this area. The first mistake that we make as we get into courtship, most of us are in a hurry to fall in love. We are in a hurry to fall in love. Every girl you meet, you want to fall in love with her. Every guy you meet, you are in a hurry 
They are not getting finished. There are many. You don't need to have the stampede. Mm. Take your time. Understand men. Understand women. We get into this area with a lot of ignorance. Go and read about men if you're a woman. Actually, first read about women. Understand women. Understand yourself. If you're a man, understand men. There used to be a book entitled What Every Young Man Should Know. Understand men. Understand yourself first before you look for other people. First understand the anatomy and physiology of men. First understand how to take care of yourself, how to groom yourself. Learn about dressing, habits of dressing, how to match colors as a man. Learn about exercise, how to lift weights. Learn about taking care of yourself. Learn about speaking, how to speak, how to uh, do many things. Learn those things before you look for women. Learn how to take care of your own garden, how to provide for yourself, how to do some things to survive. First learn those things. You are a woman. First learn about women. The anatomy and physiology of women, learn it first before you look for men. How women think, the intellect of women, first learn about that. Read a lot about yourself. Understand how you think. A book was written some years ago by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. But let me not rush to that book. Let me first emphasize this. First understand yourself. Appreciate yourself. After you have said, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, then you can try to enter into other people's fears. After you have understood yourself, understood manhood. I said this in church. Let me reiterate it here in this platform. Learn as a man how to bat, how men should bat. Those basics of batting, uh, how should men bat, which areas as you bat this area, what should you do with this area, how to bat this area. Same thing with a woman, how to bat yourself, how to take care of, learn, read. There are many lessons on YouTube. Learn those things first. Yeah, as I told you, I really get surprised, personally. I really get surprised to meet a young man, a young woman, who does not put on a deodorant. I, sure, me, uh, I get really, really surprised to when a young man opens his armpit, and uh, you can feel some scat missiles coming out of the camp. And that young man expects to date, to get a lady to walk alongside him with those dangerous armpits close by. How? How? Learn to do those things. Roll on a pack of roll on six of them. It's about three dollars. Six. Those can last you a year. One full year, a pack of them, $3. Those for a full year, they take care of you. And you have the audacity to come in public without doing something to your armpits. Then you go to a sister and say, please, I want to enter your space. With all that auto, ay, 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 ay. Yes, and to meet a sister with, you don't just, those simple things, those are basic and very extremely important. Uh, there is another book I read, The Sensuous Man 
the author is M. You are not yet ready to read that book. Uh, but before you get married as a young man, there is also the other partner to that book, The Sensuous Woman. Before you get married, read that book. One of the issues is hygiene, taking care of yourself as a young man. Make sure as a young woman, make sure you take care of yourself. Smell nice, look nice, match your colors, do your things properly as somebody who expects to attract other people. You won't attract them only through prayer. You need to pray. But uh, don't expect that after you have prayed, then you go with a smelly armpit and a smelling mouth. Then somebody will say, he is smelling like the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit doesn't smell like that. Do those basics. That is very important. As I've said, you are in a hurry. First, understand the world of women as a man. As I've said, read about them. Read how, about how they think. Read a lot about their anatomy and physiology. It will help you as you get married to understand them quite, quite well. What is it that makes women happy? What is it that makes men happy? And how does male logic function? How do men process issues in general? Of course, it may be too over-generalized, over but it helps you to understand the psychology of men. How do men think? Then, as you get into dating, uh, first do group dating. You go as a group, you walk as a group, you sit mingle together without committing yourself to anybody. Those social events, they help you to understand some issues, open up your old view and help you to understand many things without committing yourself to somebody. You see, when you rush to commit yourself to a person, it limits your social horizon. You spend most of your time around one person, starting one person, instead of broadening your scope, understanding, broadening your understanding. But now you are limited to one person, and that person, he, he or she, is telling you whom to talk to. I saw you talking to so and so. What are you talking? No, we're just friends. I mean, I'm not comfortable. I am not. Please, please. You tell me. That person is limiting you. You spend your entire energy with one person and you now become a shadow of that person. Later on, the person says, I am not ready to marry you. And you have lost an opportunity to understand the world. First, broaden yourself. Go on group dates. Talk to others when there is a pride, there is whatever, you're vegetarian, go and buy some corn and uh, <laughs> you spend time together and uh, have time to mingle, understand people. And also those group dates, they protect you from quickly committing yourself and also getting into some risky situations. They help you to first mature and see things in a much better way. Then as you then uh, narrow your date, that no, I'm going to store and so without really committing yourself. No, he has invited me to go for this. Make your parents away. That's so and so, mom. I'm going out to so and so. He is taking me, he's saying, we must just go for lunch. Mom, I'm going out with him. There is nothing, no relationship, but we're going out. I don't know what's up in his mind. But do you like him? I think I like him. Yeah, I think, I, I think I've got to like him, but I still need to understand him. First, make your parents aware or your guardian. Make them 
aware of what is happening. They will monitor the developments. They will help you in many things. Then, now you commit yourself into a courtship. There are many things you have to monitor before you make those commitments. You don't want to be always getting into a courtship again and again. Uh, today, you are courting so-and-so, it's over, it's broken, you are courting so-and-so. Then, uh, you, nobody ends up taking you seriously. That, ah, uh, that one, ah, campus, you can put up an apple. What, la pana pana won't kill a van. Yeah, ah, uh, that one is generous, very, very generous. Ah, uh, no, you, you don't want that tag on you. So, be very careful before you commit yourself to anything. Give yourself time. There are things you must monitor. Uh, look at the appearance of the person. The physical beauty, the is he handsome, is it an up and beauty is in the highest of the behold. Do you like how that person looks? Are you satisfied about his looks? And as I told you, because we age, I am aging. When my wife first saw me, I didn't look like this. But I am changing. I am changing, and I will continue changing. And as Jesus, if it delays coming, I may quickly get to a pet. And as adults, we can be able to see that young girl as a grandmother. We have a way of seeing that, oh, this one, when she becomes a grandmother, she might most likely be looking like this. And you are seeing today, there are some people who can help you to see what is coming tomorrow. And will you, will you endure it? Ah, uh, right. Uh, I am not listing this in order of their priority, no. Uh, read Luke 2 verse 52, Jesus grew in wisdom, in stature, and in favor with God and men. Look at the intellectual capacity of that person. Uh, when you sit and talk, are you able to discuss issues that pertain to life? Or you are always talking about movies, Netflix, Facebook, etc. But when you come to issues that pertain to life, that person does not want to engage those issues. Uh, when you get married, you will stop talking about Netflix. You have to talk about real issues. And those have to be discussed now. The intellectual capacity, is, it's not necessarily the degree. That somebody has a degree, has a what, what, no. But the logical processing of issues, you have to analyze it yourself and say, is this a man who can really father my children? Is this a man who can help me to look at issues in life and really process them in a way that will make both of us to grow? Uh, analyze that, assess it yourself. And then also look at the social component of the person. Is, is somebody who, whom you enjoy being with, does he have the emotional capacity? You are, you are an emotional being. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And uh, you may need something romantic. Uh, yes, he is a pastor. Very, very good. But it does not mean that if you are a pastor, when it's Valentine's Day, then you go to APC, you buy uh, messages to young people, give 
to your girlfriend and say, this is your Valentine's gift, my sister. Uh, very, very good book. Very, very good book. But women are romantic. That is one reality. Women are romantic. And uh, if you go and buy a very, very, very good book by Ellen White or a Bible and say, this is Valentine's gift, you might find your relationship struggling. Then you will complain and say, that lady is unspiritual. Ah, that lady does not know. Human beings, women are romantic, and there are things that are romantic, which to us, in the world of men, they are very fun. A flower, a rose. To us, what's the difference in this flower? But they just love them. I don't know. I don't know why. They know, they, they know it themselves. But that is their world. That is the world of women. And don't rush into the world of women without understanding the psychology of women. You will struggle. You will be dating this one, then it doesn't work out. You date the next one, it doesn't work out. Because every, every time when you send them a gift, you send them a shovel or a hoe. Here is a hoe, my sister. Uh, it's a gift uh, given with love by so and so. Uh, understand their world. And uh, these are emotional beings. And be able, and so those are things that you have to uh, analyze. Will this person assist me emotionally? Will this woman assist me emotionally? Uh, men are people of ego who enjoy a lot of affirmation that you are strong, you are a wizard, you are a thinker man. They, 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 they love that. And uh, you have this woman you are dating and she never affirms you. She is very beautiful. Very, very beautiful. She is a prayer warrior, but she never affirms you. You never feel affirmed. She has no emotion towards you. It's you who is always funny. You who is always sending messages, good night. If you don't do it, she never does it. Now you get married. Do you have the energy to be spending on her always? pursuing here always. Those are the things that you have to assess. Does this person have the emotional energy towards you? If she doesn't, uh, don't quickly rush into a courtship or no, allow, I think, yeah, it seems this woman may not be really interested in me. Then also look at the spiritual side. This woman, this man, is his spiritual inclination to we blend. When you say, you go on a date and you say, let's pray, does, is it something that really excites him? Or it's something that really bores him? Uh, even the content that he has, does he start the courtly? Does he start the courtly? Does she return tight? May I? I usually say, if that lady, that man, does not return tight, he has the audacity to cheat God. And uh, now, you, do you think you are bigger than God? Uh, try it, it will see, it will work out. Just try it. It will look, it, it, the spiritual, and also uh, your uh, spiritual or religious traditions, they, are, they matter a lot. If you are Anglican, you are better off with somebody who is Anglican. If you are Pentecostal, you are better off with somebody who is Pentecostal. You understand each other. 
uh, you marry the lady, you are Adventist, she is Pentecostal, and she is a sincere believer, very, very sincere. Those people pray, those people are very sincere. But the traditions are different. Something is excited here. Amen, pastor. The relatives begin to see, ah, what is he doing? Yes, eh? Nah. <laughs> the lady gets offended, but she is sincere. You struggle, your marriage will struggle because your traditions are different. Look for somebody from your own religious tradition. And let me tell you, uh, this is a journey and this is something that needs a lot of prayer before you get into it. It's different from buying a car. With a car, you can change cars as much as you want as long as money is there. With a wife, it's a touch and you move. You, it's ketile ketile. You choose. If you want to divorce, ask divorcees. Go and talk to them. Divorcees who are happy. If you find one divorcee who has not been injured by the divorce, you come here and I search for some money to give you. If I don't find one, just be assured I wish to give it to you. Uh, so this is the reality. Let me often open up for discussions. Just come to the mic and ask your questions. Let's, let's engage. Yes, uh, uh, questions, Let, let's engage, let's talk. I have two questions. The first one is regarding the topic of yesterday. Uh, what if I get a girl who date, end up into courtship? So she initially tells me at the beginning of the relationship, up until we get to courtship, that she's a virgin. We end up getting married. On the day of uh, honeymoon, <coughs> I found out, I found out that She's not a virgin. When I enter into Jerusalem, <laughs> I, I find that the gates have been already opened. So what, what could be the advice? Is it advisable for me to cancel the marriage? Because it can be two possibilities. It could be that she was actually lying to me that she was a virgin because she was afraid that I will not marry her. Or that she was indeed a virgin, but she cheated during the journey before we got, we got uh, gotten married. Another uh, second question, then I sit down, is based on the issue of, I won't say is it marriage or, or maybe courtship. Uh, is it, shouldn't we maybe go back to the concept of getting married? Is it, is it like, in the biblical messages or teachings of the Bible, that we are supposed to have a pastor who would bless us to get married, or we are supposed to have blessings of the family in, in the context of Africans. Because this thing of having a pastor who would bless us, it's coming with the, with the uh, missionaries. Initially, we didn't have that, that thing. So why is it necessary to have a pastor's blessing when you are getting married? That is my second question. Thank you. Very good questions. Very, very good questions. Let me say something, comment something uh, to, to the ladies. In this area, it tells you you have to be extra careful with yourself because you your, your anatomy makes you to be much more vulnerable. It's easier to see with a woman. With a man, it's difficult to establish 
But so it makes you, it means you have to be much, much more careful with yourself. Then what I should say, what I would say is marriage is a matter of trust. And courtship and dating is also a matter of trust. As you develop trust for one another, this is what will enable the other to divulge information about yourself. Actually, it's a journey of knowing the other. That is why, when I mentioned I began, I told you a book by Dale Carnegie, How to Win Friends and Influence People. Dale Carnegie says, what's important when you get to people, learn about them. Don't tell them more about yourself. Learn more about them. Always be asking questions. Talk more and allow that person to develop trust in you. And if, you, if the person develops trust in you, you are dating a young lady, you show her that you love her and you love her for whom she is. You are not searching for a virgin in her. You have loved her as she is. And as she gets that assurance, she will tell you her history. That this is my history. I had these struggles, and this is me. As long as she is assured that this man loves me genuinely, and he is not intending to use this information to harm me, she will tell you. But mostly, as I told you, Slamawala, Tinemawala. Quickly is dating, quickly is courtship, quickly, the whole thing, the whole journey is fast tracked without understanding the person, what you're committing yourself into. When you are already in, to, close to marriage, paying lobola, do you think I can tell you whether I'm a virgin or not? I can't. I cannot. So, develop trust. And also let me challenge this myth. There is a myth that if you marry a virgin, your chances of divorcing are lower. Research has shown that no, it's not true. There are men who have divorced, who married virgins. The issue is loving and trusting. Accept the person. Marriage is about the other. If you love the other, say, what do I want to do to this woman? Not what I want this woman to do for me. Your marriage will be happy. But if you want that woman to do something for you, you will find she will do nothing for you. And if you are marrying a man because you want him to do something for you, he will do nothing for you. Do it because you are concerned about her, what you will do for her. So that's the first one, develop the trust. If you discover on the day of, of the wedding, it means there was a problem in the dating and courtship. So accept it as it is. You made the mistake, live the, with the mistake. You never generated trust. You hurried the whole thing before the woman could trust you. So live with her. Tell yourself, I made the mistake of hurrying this woman before I could understand her fully. So this is the woman that I've married and let me live with her. And also let me tell you, you will never find an angel on earth. No, even the virgins, they also tell lies. <laughs> they also get angry. I am not campaigning for non-virgins, no. But what I'm telling you is, uh, as you prepare to get married, you are marrying a sinner who has his or her struggles. Then the, on your second question, bring it again. The second question. All right, okay. The second question. For marriage in the Bible, the marriage 
needs three pillars. The church, Genesis 2.24, it's God who solemnized marriage. Genesis 2.18, it's God who said it's not good for men to be alone. So God is the first pillar. It is the church uh, which was instituted by God here on earth, and that is the first pillar of marriage. The second pillar of marriage, it is the family. Genesis 24, we have Isaac sending uh, uh, Abraham, sending uh, Eliezer for the wife of uh, Isaac. And uh, we have many of these examples. The family is an important pillar of marriage. Then the third pillar is the society. You have Jesus attending the wedding at Cana, uh, invited there as a guest in that wedding. So these three pillars, the church, the family, the society, need that. So the pastor is blessing on behalf of God and the community, you need a certificate. Why? It protects you, that certificate. You need your family to be part, to bless that marriage. So that's the biblical position. Thank you. Right, you can... Yes, oh, thank you, thank you, yes. Thank you, so I, I just wanted to comment on the issue of uh, virginity. Are you a virgin, are you an, a non-virgin? And at what point do you discover this? Um, do you, I, I don't feel that you need to open up your status to everyone who asks you out. There's a smart way of avoiding disappointment. I guess sometimes we don't know how to get into relationships. When someone asks me out, I look at the pocket, I look at how handsome it is, is he, I look at how beautiful, it, how is the structure like. There are things that we don't really, that don't matter to us, but that will matter. I think also sometimes we don't know the right reasons for getting into relationships or into marriage. For some, it's just pressure to say, I've been a bridesmaid for 10 years. I've worn 20 dresses. Let me just enter into it. We don't know why. And this leads to what he was talking about. When someone asks you out, when someone asks you out, you need, number one, to know, be confident and assertive. And you need to know what do they want. For example, together, what are your expectations from a, a woman? I'm a girl who's being asked out. What are your expectations from me, or what are you expecting the kind of woman that you want? He will tell you, number one, I want a virgin. If you already know you're out, don't say yes. <laughs> right? I don't have to tell you whether I'm a virgin or not. Out together. But I can just ask you, what are your expectations? He'll tell you, I want a virgin. I want a prayer warrior. You know yourself. Out together. I want someone who's smart. I want someone, okay, you're checking your list. I think I don't qualify here. I, later on, you just don't accept the proposal, but you just haven't said what, where you stand. You've done it for yourself to, to protect your respect, but you've also respected him not to be disappointed. So I think most of the times, we don't know how to get into relationships. We just jump in because I have feelings. I have to have someone who's available. Because uh, people are getting married and doing this low baller thing, I also have to join in. If you don't know why you are getting into it, you have a reason of getting out of it. Excellent. That is not... Your, your history is not for public consumption. It's, it's your history. And it's you and God who know your history. There will always be gossipers, but it's not every day that you have to, ah, let me ask you, let's go for a date. My sister, are you a virgin? <laughs> no. Hi. Ah, 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 ah. You have, that is personal information. You can only disclose it after you have gained the trust for the person that this person is really having good intentions for me. And not everybody has those good intentions. So don't be in the habit of disclosing your history to everyone on earth.
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Doc. First, I, I really appreciate, especially on the aspect of, uh, of virginity that we've just okay, brought forth. Okay, the aspect of the issue of virginity that we've raised. I, I need you to help me and my fellow colleagues who are men as someone who has read the physiology and uh, the biological aspect of men in as much as uh, marriage and uh, sexual un understanding is concerned. To, to what extent, how does it affect a man to be in a marriage or to be in a relationship? Let me say marriage, to be married to someone who is not a virgin while you are one, to what extent does that affect you as a man after understanding the physiology or whatever aspect that you need to consider? As someone who is married, someone who understands this from a practical position, and someone who has read about all that, how best can you uh, advise us, all of us, to at the end of the day so that we come to a, a position which is informed? Excellent. It, it takes us back to yesterday's, yesterday's lesson. Yesterday, we talked about uh, adultery, the effect. There's something I, I never mentioned yesterday. When you are intimate with another person, God made sex to be something very mystical, which is bonding. There are several functions of sex. Number one, bonding, two, it is joy, also for procreation. Uh, research has shown there is a bonding hormone which is released in intimacy, which is known as oxytocin. It's a bonding hormone. There is a book, it must be there in the library, written by Donald Joy, titled False Bonding. What happens is when you become intimate, that intimacy is captured in your brain. It can recede to the uh, long-term memory, but it's stored in your brain. And it will affect your worldview, it will affect many things. So as you have that intimacy with a woman or with a man, it glues you together. That is why the Bible in Genesis 2 verse 24 says, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be cleave. The word in Hebrew which is used there she, he shall be sold unto his wife. Uh, this is the word which is used. So, sex bonds people. And if you do those things, you need counseling to get out of that because you have you will have what are known as withdrawal symptoms. Same thing as drugs. After you have it into, into a relationship and it has been so intense you have been engaging in sex. When you uh, you break up the pain that you have even if the guy was beating you, whatever. But the withdrawal symptoms are extremely severe. As you are sitting by yourself at night, you find yourself texting him. Text cancel, text cancel. You are missing him. Why? Because you were married. That, it glued you to that person. Can you conquer it? Yes, you can. But it will need a lot of deliberate efforts to win yourself from that and to remove that
from your psyche and move on with your life. That you will need to do, uh, do some talk therapy, uh, even by yourself without taking too many people, do some talk therapy and uh, help yourself to go over that. Now you are a young man, you have married a woman with that history. It's about love and acceptance. You love the person, you accept her as she is and being open with each other. If she is truthful, she tells you her script and as a man, you tell your wife your script that you know me, I have a child with another woman. As you see me, I have a child. My parents are not aware of it, but that child is mine. And I denied that woman is married to another man. But you know, that's my child. I am afraid of uh, bringing up it up now, but you know, that's my child. And let's pray about it, how we will manage it. Be truthful. When somebody is truthful, it will help you. Then later on, for a couple to divorce, then you discover that this child belonged to this man. This man had actually sired a child before in another man's family, whatever, whatever issues. As long as you are truthful, the marriage lasts very well. You love her, you accept her as she is. That's fine as long as there is truth in the marriage. But if there are lies, those lies surface, they usually affect marriage in the negative. Right, thank you. Any hand? No more hands, huh? Oh, it, it will be the last one. We want to, to close at seven. Right. Uh, I may have a different opinion a little bit. Um, looking in the Bible on Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 20, it clearly states out that virginity is important when you are married. You pay your lobola, she lied to you that she was a virgin, and you find out that she wasn't after the marriage. The Bible there clearly says you need to let that one go. And it actually goes to the extreme to say that woman should be stoned to death is not worth it to live. Now, I, would, I want to agree with that uh, opinion in the Bible. Why? Uh, yesterday you taught us, and I think I learned that in criminology as well, that behaviors, when they happen, there is that neural path which is formed. The more that behavior is repeated, the stronger, the thicker the neural path, the harder it will be for my partner uh, to stop that behavior. Now, assuming uh, that in our modern generation, women and young boys are engaging at a premarital sex at the age of 13, and I marry her at 23 or at 25. It means for the past 10 or 12 years, she has been rotating different women, uh, different men, I am sorry, different men. She has experience with 10 to 20 women. How thick is that neuropathy formed to that behavior? And what bravery do I have the guts to assume that I can take this one, make her my wife. When somebody is in the vision, the Bible makes it clear it's not hidden. It's not worth it to be a wife, especially for a pastor. You cannot tell if that person has committed abortions before. You cannot tell. There are a lot of things that are just shrouded there. So I would say to the other fellow men, let's stick with the Bible. If she's not a virgin, not worth it to be a wife. Right. Th right. Thank you very much. Now, now, it's time to, right, it's time to close now, but uh, okay. Let me allow Mrs. Maluf, then we will finish this thing tomorrow. So, tomorrow, make sure you come. Tomorrow, uh, don't miss out. Right.
Hi, my, my question to the pastor. I agree that people should handle themselves and it's also, yeah, it hurts when you discover at that point. But I want to ask a question to our fellow pastors and pastor help us. What happened to discernment? There is no way that someone who claims to be a man of God will not have discernment enough to discover after they've married someone that they are not a virgin. Yeah. There is no way, young people, that if you are working with God, you'll get to that kind and level of disappointment. It's either you have also been walking in the same path, you've just met your match. Number one. Yes. Right, right. <laughs> right. Tomorrow. Tomorrow they, they will be fire away. Tomorrow, right. All right. Uh, it's, uh, this is just me. Because for, for, for God's people... <laughs> Uh, I, I'm not saying this is what is happening to the pastor, but I want the God that I believe, it's very rare for him to disappoint, except maybe for the story of Goma and, you know, where it's an assigned thing for you. But w let's check our relationship with God and our work with God. We won't get to those levels of disappointment. Right, tomorrow, let I, I advertise, Pastor, that tomorrow people should come for your question. Tell them, to come tomorrow, tell them. Yeah. Okay, tomorrow you should come, but uh, let me just make this <laughs> Okay, I just want to make a short statement here. Um, let us not be convinced with the ladies that virginity doesn't matter because she gave it to somebody else. I deserve it. I'm the one who's paying the lobola. Actually, when you're paying lobola, in short, there's what is called Mombeechi Manda, which is an appreciation that she was deflowered. Imagine you marry somebody who's not a virgin and has slept with five, seven boys in the church, and you call yourself a pastor, stand before the congregation preaching, and the young man in the church is busy laughing, you know, I deflowered his wife. That's a shame. Right. Uh, what I can say, I think from what we. Right. From what we said yesterday, from what we said yesterday, it's very important, and uh, it's very important for us not to indulge before marriage. There is a lot of harm that happens that we underlined yesterday that we should not indulge before we get married. There is a lot of harm. I told you yesterday about premature ejaculation uh, because of neural pathways. I told you yesterday about frigidity, that when you do it outside of marriage, there is a lot of guilt and you are afraid. You think you are doing a wrong thing and you, you are doing a wrong thing. You are, you are away. Your mind registers that now we are stealing. And when you get married, the mind, because of the neural pathways, it will still be saying, now we are stealing. But when actually you are now licensed, and the body quickly freezes and becomes frigid, and there is no sexual excitement, and there are many other things that are happen because of that there is uh, what is known as dyspareunia, where there is painful intercourse. All those things, and there is also even impotence. It can also influence impotence in men. But let me say, is virginity important only for women or for both? We will have to answer it tomorrow. But the important thing that we need to take home today as we prepare for tomorrow. I think tomorrow there will be fireworks. We will start with this before we and there will be fireworks tomorrow. I will speak less and hear more. Then make my final. Uh, what should be a take home for today is please take your time. Don't worry. I'm a one. Just take your time. Start the wealth of women. Start the wealth of men. Pray. Have time with God. Understand other people. These things are not getting finished. 
It's you who is in a hurry. Take your time and make the best decision.